Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome into the Pro Football Chase Podcast. It's Isaac Sines with you. Joining me for an interview today is Kansas quarterback Carter Stanley. Stanley finished his four-year college career at Kansas with 5,035 pass yards, making him just the fifth Jayhawk to eclipse the 5,000-yard mark. He tossed 37 career touchdowns and 21 starts. Carter, thanks for joining me. How are you doing today? Doing great. Uh, you know, glad to be on this podcast. Good. Now, Carter, I want to go back to your high school playing days. You were a three-star recruit coming out of Vero Beach High School, and I'm sure you had plenty of offers to evaluate. What led you to join the Kansas football program? Yeah, it was uh, the whole recruiting process was pretty crazy, to be honest with you. Um, you know, I went to a big high school and um, actually didn't get to start until my senior year of high school. But, um, you know, just kind of knew I had to make the most of it. And with the help of my teammates and coaches, we, uh, we had a great senior year. And, um, I actually didn't have a ton of, uh, scholarship offers, but there was a lot of teams that were coming up to, uh, my head coach and I and, you know, just saying, hey, we really want to offer them. But we, uh, you know, we kind of got a guy or, you know, something along those lines. But, um, you know, KU came along in, in like the middle of January, kind of like two weeks before signing day. And, um, you know, I was really fortunate to get an offer from them. So I ended up taking them over probably the biggest offer of the month was UConn. Um, so, you know, really once I went on my official visit, I just kind of fell in love with the staff and, um, you know, just the, the facility and the campus as itself. It was a slow developing process for you at Kansas. You redshirted your freshman year. You started three games in 2016, four in 2017, two in 2018, leading up to your senior redshirt season. What did you learn about yourself during the years you served primarily as a backup? Honestly, a lot of different things. Um, You know, I'd say the main thing is uh, patience for sure. Um, you know, there's definitely times where I was frustrated and uh, not being able to be the true starter going into a season until my senior year. But, um, you know, I, I learned, uh, bits and pieces from, you know, a bunch of different coaches. I had, I worked with, uh, you know, eight offensive coordinators over my five years there. Um, so that, you know, in itself was a lot. But, uh, you know, I took, uh, bits and pieces from each one of those coaches and, um, you know, just wanted to make the most of that last year. Les Miles replaced David Beatty as the Jayhawks head coach after the 2018 season. Talk about the energy that Miles brought to the program and its fans. Yeah, he definitely brought a lot of energy. Um, you know, just really just kind of like an eye-opening experience when he first walked in that team meeting room. Um, you know, just his, his resume in itself. And, um, you know, he's, he's been at the top of college football, winning a national championship in 2007. So... Um, you know, he, he instantly kind of had our respect for that. And, um, you know, he also did a great job of hiring some great assistant coaches. So, you know, with the, uh, the help of Coach Miles and those coaches, uh, you know, I think that, that the football program is in the right direction. Under Miles, you started all 12 games in 2019. You threw for 2,664 yards, 24 touchdowns, 11 interceptions to go along with a 60.9 completion percentage. When scouts go and turn on your film, what do you want them to see? Um, certainly a competitor. You know, I think, um, you know, I think that's my main thing. I'm, I'm always going to compete. Also, uh, you know, I, I think they'll see a lot of, different throws, you know, that I made. Um, and, you know, I was, I was very thankful for the offense we had this last year. I was able to do a bunch of different things, you know, some play action stuff, some RPO stuff, um, some air raid stuff. So, you know, it was, it was great just to get that, um, you know, different level of throws in. You know, I think those scouts will see an accurate passer and, you know, just a competitor. Carter, you tossed seven total touchdowns, zero interceptions against two of the powerhouses in the Big 12, Oklahoma and Texas. Those two games, you shined, and that put you on the grid and on the radar of several NFL teams. Talk about how those outings showcased your NFL potential. Yeah, I mean, those were games where, uh, you know, certainly we knew we had to, uh, we had to show up. We, uh, you know, I think we definitely performed better against Texas than what we did against Oklahoma. But, um, you know, it was, uh, it was just, you know, I got to give credit to my teammates. Great job by the O-line. Um, great job by the receivers. And, you know, coaches showing up some great plays. So, 
um, you know, those are, those are two good games for us, definitely. And, um, you know, we, we ended up having a few more after that. At 6'2", 200 pounds, what intangibles, what traits, Carter, set you apart from other draft-eligible quarterbacks? I'd say, um, I'd say my accuracy and my mobility in the pocket. Um, I've always taken pride in, you know, kind of throwing some off-platform throws and, you know, looking around the NFL today, you see a lot of the guys that are making plays and, you know, winning football games. Those guys are, you know, kind of mobile guys and um, definitely guys that are accurate with football. What are some things you have been working to improve ahead of the NFL draft, Carter? Have there been any things to your mechanics, maybe uh, throwing on the run? Have you been putting any specific focus on any particular drills out there? Yeah, I've been doing a ton. Um, you know, I've been working with Jay Christensen, who's uh, he's also a Patrick Mahomes quarterback coach. He's a uh, son of Jeff Christensen. He's a uh, you know big time quarterback coach from the Chicago area. So, I've been putting in work with him, you know, six days a week really for the past, I don't know, probably four months. And, um, you know, a lot of it is just cleaning up my footwork. Um, also just working on being more of a rotational passer, um, instead of just kind of like relying on my arm. So that's, it's helped me a lot. Um, you know, I feel like I just have more power now, you know, without using more exertion. You participated in the 2020 Spiral Tropical Bowl in Daytona Beach, Florida on January 12th. Talk about your experience being a part of that event and how it benefited you. Yeah, that was, that was a good event. I was, uh, you know, I was very fortunate to be a part of that. Uh, it was great to get in there with you know, some guys that have a common goal of you know, making it to the NFL and uh, you know, working with and competing with those guys. So uh, you know, we had two practices um, that led up to the game on Sunday. And, you know, the game didn't necessarily go how we wanted to, but, you know, some of those all-star games could be tricky with this, you know, kind of the reps and, you know, you haven't necessarily been working with those guys, you know, for a long time at all. But, you know, the practices went well, and, um, you know, it was a good experience overall just to meet with scouts. You were also a State Farm All-Star Challenge participant, which is a notable event that features some of the nation's best athletes. It's at AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas. How much fun did you have competing at that event? That was awesome. You know, that was, that was a great event, no doubt. Um, you know, just to be with some of that, like you said, um, you know, just to go in there in the you know, AT&T Stadium, just an incredible venue. And, um, you know, it was just it was really well ran, and, you know, I was just blessed to be a part of it. Carter, what type of study habits do you possess? How do you ensure you're always prepared for each opponent? Yeah, that's, um, you know, the film aspect of the game, that's something I definitely picked up later in my career. Um, you know, I, I realized that, uh, you know, talent just isn't enough. You have to apply yourself in the uh, film room, and, you know, my coaches do a great job in film room. So um, that's a huge aspect of it. I'd say, you know, it's honestly about half of it. So... Um, the more prepared you go into a game, it just you know gives you a better chance, hundred percent, just because you know you know what the other team's tendencies are, and you know just makes you more comfortable. Do you feel confident that you can run and thrive in any system in the NFL? Yeah, I mean absolutely. Um, you know, just like I kind of referred to earlier, eight um, offensive coordinators in college, and you know, as you can imagine, that's like a lot of different systems that I've been in and especially this past season it was uh you know coach miles implemented his own offense we had coach Dierman. um you know he's more of an rpo uh receivers coach brought in more of like an air raid style so and then there's a little bit of west coast in there as well so yeah it's a, it's a lot of different stuff that i was able to learn this year and you know overall i'm extremely fortunate to be a part of that so yep you're flying under the radar right now in the NFL in terms of who's available. You know, all the big names, the Joe Burrow, Tua, Justin Herbert, all those guys are getting all the chatter, but it seems like you're a guy that thrives being the underdog, playing with a chip on your shoulder. What drives you to prove all the doubters wrong that you will make it at the next level? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, it's something I've just always, um, you know, just Kind of like I said earlier, only starting one year in high school and making the most of it, and then you know being the first starter for only one year in college. You know, I feel like I I kind of play with that chip on my shoulder, and um, you know it's something that I've kind of always had with me, and 
you know, looking to carry it forward with me in this next step. And lastly, Carter, what do you want NFL teams to know about your work ethic, your character, and your drive for success? Yeah, I mean, I've uh, I've always loved football. Football has been my number one passion, you know, since I was, you know, for as long as I can remember, probably four or five years old. But, um, you know, I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm always going to be probably the first guy in there, last time I'm leading. Um, I'm extremely dedicated to this game. I've uh, I've always been, you know, I think a likable guy in the locker room, and you know my teammates can attest to that. And um, you know I'm just going to be a guy that walks in there and, and works from day one. Carter, thanks for joining the podcast again, man. I enjoyed the conversation. I wish you the best moving forward as you continue your preparations for the upcoming NFL draft. Stay safe out there, and many blessings to you. Yes, sir. Isaac, I really appreciate you having me, and. Uh, All right, man. Take it easy. All right. Thank you.